A military ration, but a very, very rare one. This is one of the last few Scottish Army rations. It's single serving meal number five, winter high calorie. But when they say winter high calorie, it was also used as an extreme environment high calorie. And this is just coming out to the end of its best before date. And the reason for that is because the Scottish Army has pretty much been integrated into the British Army. The Royal Scots is the last sort of remaining section that I know of. It's the only ones that I tend to work alongside and they seem to be getting smaller every year. So this is more a look into the history of the Scottish Army. So let's get straight into it. So like most of these military rations, it has a little tear tab thing. Hopefully that's going to work for me because uh, in the past it's been quite destructive. And by high calorie, I can already see Tunnock's caramel wafers. Not just one caramel wafer, but a whole pack of them. An eight pack of caramel wafers. That's a great start. What else do we have here? Tunnock's. Again, um, <sighs> blended scotch whiskey. Cooperative. That's odd, but I suppose ultimately it doesn't matter. What else have we got in here? Oh, God, this is fucking amazing. This is a Trident Ingot ration heater. I'm so excited. Let's put, let's, uh, what else have we got? At the moment, uh, let's, uh, we've got more chocolate as they usually have. Let's put this out of the way at the moment because I want to take a close look at some of the items we've got here already and then we'll take some more out of that packet. Let's start with the, the alcohol. Now, you might think it's really odd issuing alcohol to an army, but in reality, if you look at the Navy, they had their ration of rum every day. And it's important to note that when they were actually in combat, obviously common sense says you don't want to go in drunk, though a little bit of alcohol can actually liberate you. And uh, if you want a demonstration of how alcohol liberates aggression in Scots, all you have to do is go into Glasgow at the weekend. And there's a certain connection with Glasgow here because the Navy, um, they traditionally the allowance of alcohol in the Navy was a gallon or eight pints of beer a day, which is ridiculous. And they could trade that. It, well, it, sometimes the beer was going off. That's why they ended up with rum. Uh, but that would go down to, you could choose the beer or a pint of wine or half a pint of spirit. I think half a pint of spirit sounds like a good deal there, but eight pints of beer is too much. But because beer spoiled and it took a large amount of space up, the Navy would, uh, they later switched to rum and they reduced the ration because obviously that was too much. And they reduced the ration laterally to about 285 millilitres a day, but it was diluted with water and that's what grog was. And they'd often add lime or lemon to it to combat scurvy, um, which is kind of almost like it's where Dark and Storm is coming from, isn't it? So the Scots army traditionally had, you know, there's a strong tradition of Whiskey. And every uh, regiment in the Scottish army has, they've actually got a cocktail and they've got a favoured drink. It's just a tradition that alcohol and the army have always gone hand in hand. So this was not provided on the basis that they just chug the whole lot. It was provided for moral fortification and it could be drunk in a controlled manner. Or if things were intense, it could be perhaps taken into greater levels. Uh, the whole tradition of rum in the Navy was uh, disbanded about 1970. Um, I think New Zealand uh, went on a bit longer. Uh, it was Britain and then Canada and then New Zealand disbanded it in sort of sequence, but they still allow alcohol in the Navy. Uh, they allow um, an allowance every day. They can buy three half pint cans, I think it is, of beer for recreational purposes. But that's uh, it. The whiskey is quite nice. The tunnocks is basically just comfort food. And when you've got a cold environment like Scotland or Canada is a very good example because Canada and Scotland share a lot of the sort of common weather and Ireland. And, you know, Ireland like their whiskey too. I think we can safely say that. So this is not just a standard tunnock's tea cake. This was military grade and as such the chocolate is much thicker so it can be shipped and it's a higher temperature chocolate. So if I push hard on this, you know, it's really not giving it. It's really thick um, but then it gives. Mm. But much thicker mm, than the normal chocolate. Anyway much harder. The 
Trident Ingot Ration Heater. This is amazing. This is so rare. There were only two militia organizations in the world that issued radioactive ration heaters. One was the Russian army and one was the Scottish army. And it's because the nuclear arsenal is based in Scotland. When the British government decided we need to put the uh, Trident missile um, submarine somewhere safe that they're not going to cause any damage to the population if they blow up, they decided, well, we can't put them anywhere in England, obviously, or Wales or Ireland. So they said, we'll put them in Scotland because Scotland has lots of space, lots of free land that we could put it out remotely. And then they put it next to the most populated city. And this is a based on, it's called a Trident Ingot Ration Heater because it's based on an uh, atomic extract, plutonium extract from the Trident submarine fuel rods. But in this case, it's in a very controlled system. It's got the controlled heater. It's also got, if I pull this out now, it won't heat up. Now, you know how this thing about radiation and all that, this fluorescent green colour? This is just coolant. The rod in the middle is the actual nuclear rod. It's a pl based on a plutonium alloy. And it has a pacif pacif pacification rod. A <sighs> Let's give its property a neutron absorber rod down it. The green liquid is purely the coolant, and the reason it's green is just to identify and just to show that it's just to make these devices easy to identify. At the moment, it's cold. I shall put it back in its outer shield because that makes it safer, but that is going to be used to heat the main course. It's very, very unusual. Uh, there's no instructions with it because they specifically give training in how to use these heaters. Let's bring in the ration pack, and the other thing that's in it is a very high calorie snack. And you think, a pot noodle. That is really strange. Not just a pot noodle, but a king pot noodle. And you have to realise that the Scotch running carbohydrate, it's a cold climate, so while protein and stuff like that is useful, the carbohydrate is one of the most important things. And uh, this is just one of the most popular flavours in Scotland. It's the pot King Pot Noodle Bombay Bad Boy. Turn bad boy in four minutes. The, I think it'll take a bit longer because this takes a bit longer to heat the water than that. But, you know, it's consistent. It's slightly warm, but it's not very hot because it's neutralising. Neutron absorber rod is in position. What else do we have in here? A can of iron brew, which is a perfect choice. This is used to turn a shot of blended scotch whiskey into a long drink called a girder. Blended scotch whiskey with iron brew, a shot of that in this can of iron brew will turn it into the girder. It's just so brilliant because this is smoky, this is aromatic, it makes just a long drink that is just very pleasant. In fact, you know, when I first discovered girders, I drank far too much. Let's leave it there. What else do we have? More carbohydrate, M&Ms, that is nice. What else do we have? That's it, right, tell you what, I'll put that out of the way. We have a shot glass. We have an oxo cube. The oxo cube, the main purpose of that, if there wasn't enough salt, mm -hmm. it was to avoid dehydration. If there wasn't enough salt in the pot noodle, Bombay bad boy, you can add an oxo cube for extra zing. Uh, we've got, hold on, I'm just gonna grab something. Okay, we've got the the fork that's need to eat the pot noodles. This is one weakness of this ration pack. I wish they'd use a proper fork because eating pot noodles with one of these plastic forks is just, it's a bad idea. We've got the toilet paper allowance and they allow one electronic cigarette. Um, it's quite an old ration pack. Let's give that a go. Let's see what happens to this. That still works really well. That is surprising. I thought the battery might have drained down with passive sort of leakage in the circuitry. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, uh, well, start eating all this stuff, really. And I'm going to open this pot noodle, which was made to military specifications. Here is the Unleash What's Inside. That's a sauce for the top. That's nice. It's spicy hot sauce. I'm going to add the water to this. This uh, nuclear heater will take a while to come up to temperature, so I shall return the moment once it's up to temperature, and I'll show you 
the neutron absorber rod going into this to actually pacify it again. So I will be back in a moment. Okay, the pot noodle is up to temperature. I'm going to take the heater. The heater is very hot. The heater is extremely hot. I'm going to pull this out with a pair of pliers here. Now, it's interesting to note that it's got a neutron absorption rod. I'm just going to get a bit of paper and wipe this right. Okay, I'm going to clean this off. It's extremely hot. If I left it any longer, it would start smoking, but it does regulate. It's got a positive temperature coefficient characteristic on the uh, alloy in here that it will self-regulate. But here is the important bit. I'm going to slide the neutron absorption rod down the middle like this, just slides in, and it's sort of sticky enough that it doesn't drop back out again. And then I'm going to slide that back into its sleeve to dissipate that heat. If you left the rod out, it would continue to get hotter, but it would regulate at a certain temperature. By putting the neutron absorption rod in, it brings it down to a temperature that it's easy to transport in its little heat sink and, of course, radiation absorber. You don't have to worry too much about cleaning it because it is mildly radioactive, so it irradiates any sort of bacteria and stuff that might exist on it. So let's test the pot noodle. And this is where this fork is just rubbish for the pot noodle. It's the one weakness of these, but I'll try it. Mm. Oh, does that. Mm. Yeah. Does that need the hot sauce? I think probably it does. I'm not really into hot sauce. Let's try. Let's put some on it. Oh, blimey, it's red and sticky. It's like really venomous looking hot sauce. I'm going to try a wee bit. It's very vinaigrate. That is very hot. Yeah, regretting that. Let's stir it in. Oh, that is hot. So while that's just uh, getting ready there, well, it's kind of ready already. I shall get the shot glass. The shot glass is just a measurement device, but it's got other uses as well. Hold on, I'm just going to empty this glass. Mm. Mm. Let me introduce you to the American drink called the Gerda. Iron Brew. Traditional iron brew. It's, if I could describe the taste, it's aromatic. It's sort of hints of cinnamon, but not really cinnamon. I don't, I don't know. What, what would you describe that as? Um, clove and cinnamon and lots of other aromatic flavours. Mm. But then when you add the whiskey. So that's one shot of whiskey. I'm going to keep things under control, particularly in combat situations. And pour it all over the bench, in fact. Excellent. I'll bring that that paper back in and mop that up. Excellent. Glad they provide quite a lot. Can I mention they provide quite a lot of paper? But that's quite good, given that pot noodles are involved. Um, so, this is now what's called a girder, and it's... Aromatic, it's smoky, it's a really nice drink. Look up online. Iron Brew, spelt I-R-N-B-R-U, and whiskey. It's called a girder. Look it up. It's a really amazing cocktail. Mm. And we got the curl wafers here. This one, uh, it says in the packet, it says more than 6 million of these biscuits made and sold every week. These are still made in Uddingston in Glasgow. I think I thought they were, yeah. They, I thought they were made more out of Hamiltonish area, but they, but maybe they've changed. I'm not sure. Maybe it's always been Huntington. I remember these biscuits when they were saying more than five hundred thousand of these biscuits made and sold every week. Then it was a million, then two, then three, then four. Goodness knows with a modern pack. Maybe I should go and buy a pack. I wonder what it would be because it's six million six million at the moment. And these are chocolate coated wafer biscuits. Mmm. Mmm with caramel in between each layer of the wafer. They're great. But anyway, that's pudding. As is this Yorkie bar. The Yorkie bar, Raisin Biscuit, the main selling point of this used to be, and they've changed that now, it used to have a picture of the sort of ladies' toilet symbol with a big X through it. Not for ladies, it's only for men because it's so butch and chunky. It's a good choice. Mmm, give it a puff on their electronic cigarette. It's quite a strong tobacco-ish flavour. That is very potent. I hope it doesn't contain any special military drugs or something like that. 
Maybe it's coupled to the radioactive emitter here. Well, that's quite warm. That is that is very hot, but that's because it only contained that heat. It's The neutron absorber's working, but it is still pretty hot. That's quite nice. It'd be nice as a, a hand warmer. Uh, this is just amazing, the pot noodle. But then again, all pot noodles are amazing. Pot noodle. What can I say? It's pot noodle. And I absolutely guarantee the Scottish Army runs on pot noodle chocolate and iron brew and whiskey. Mm. So there we go. That's a look inside a Scottish ration pack. It is what I'd expect a Canadian ration pack to be like. It's very rich in calories because, of course, the energy and stuff like that. It's got a little ration of li liquor, which I don't know. The Canadians, I guess the Canadian Army still has a bit of a liquor ration. But the distinctive features here are, of course, the atomic heater and the uh, the iron brew, that lovely aromatic drink that is so traditional in Scotland. Oh, I can't even tell you this girder. Mm. Whiskey and iron brew go so well together. And there we have it. A look at a very rare Scottish army ration pack. So very interesting. Well worth eating, and I am indeed about to eat this whole thing. I'm not going to drink the whole bottle of whiskey, but I'll be finishing this can of iron brew with suitable reinforcement and playing about this. I'm going to add this to my atomic arsenal, my nuclear, uh, my nuclear devices that I keep for, well, just collectability. So there you go, the Scottish military ration, the MRE. One final bit to this video, I want to test the ration heater with a Geiger counter. So I've got a Geiger counter here, a Japanese Geiger counter. I've got it sitting on a bad dragon brick just to keep it off the workbench and bring it up close to the camera. And in this device, the Geiger Muller tube is actually this gold colored tube at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring the ration heater up to it while it's in its sleeve and dissipator and we'll see what effect it has. So I'm bringing it up now, I can hear the radiation count increasing, it's really, really getting quite potent. And I know from previous tests, as I bring it up to the guide counter, even with its dissipator on and with the neutron absorption rod in, it's actually quite radioactive. And if I leave this here too long, it will actually set off the alarm on the guide counter. So this is not something you'd necessarily want to uh, keep in your pocket as a hand warmer, but it's something that's ideal for heating your pot noodle and water and stuff like that, where it's going to provide sterilization effects through irradiation and it's also going to provide that heat. So quite interesting.